We are now joined by Damon Griffin, former Oregon wide receiver, four years in the NFL, our college football game day and college football game night analyst. Damon, a big win for the Ducks last night. Mark Helfrich's first signature win, I think, as a head coach. What does this win mean for Mark Helfrich and for this program, big picture-wise? I think it's, University of Oregon's always got that national recognition right now. They're highly ranked, but they're always known as can't beat that power team. Right. They can't get past the teams that are just going to run right up you as well as have a great defense. Today was that mark for Coach Helfrich, the coaching staff, Don Pelham, all the everybody finally getting over the hump as a team because that was a team effort, especially in the second half, to definitely dominate but more importantly make their mark and say we are one of those teams that should be recognized as one of the top four in the country. You mentioned Don Pelham, yeah. Michigan State scored. Uh, I will in the second quarter at least. It was scary. <laughs> 24 points in total in, in, in the second quarter, and then only three in the second half. What did Dom Pelham and what did the Ducks defense do to change things around in the second half? Well, I think they didn't change, yeah. but they put more pressure. I think in the first half they didn't. They had certain schemes where they had two or three guys blitzing or actually rushing, and then I think they felt very comfortable with sticking their receivers. But what they changed in the second half was just a mental, a mental attitude of making plays, making tackles, because they always swarm. But I think this time they were actually making the tackles, they were blitzing a little bit more, and at the end of the day, they made third down stops when they need to make it well, in crucial situations. And when they did that, the offense took over. It was a team effort totally in the second half. And then the offense in the second half got third down conversions, and a lot of that was because of Marcus Mariota, <laughs> who made some spectacular plays in the second half. You called yesterday on college football game night, you called his shovel pass maybe a Heisman <laughs> moment. Uh, what, what do you think about Marcus's game, and how impressive was he, especially in the second half? Well, it's good to see Marcus make those plays. We all know he can do it, but for whatever reason, it kind of seemed in the first half, he was kind of sitting in the pocket lot, trying to make plays, and he wants to be stabilized as that type of person. But what who he is, is who he is. Get out, make a play, be an instinctual type of guy that just goes out there that can't be counted for by the defense, but more importantly, to just make plays. And he's just so smooth, so cool. <laughs> it was exciting to see him do those type of things because everybody follows when he makes those plays. Moving forward now, Wyoming next week at 11 a.m., no offense to the Cowboys, <laughs> not quite the same type of game as we had yesterday. Does this win in the big picture of the season as we look forward? Does this change how you feel about Oregon about Oregon's team. This no, year? I don't think it changes because they're they're really it's only a second game, and for them yeah. to make a marquee win like they did in a statement game like they did, that's a rec a team that was recognized as one of the top teams in the country, really puts them in the upper echelon of really being credible as the team to beat in the Pac-12. Now, we, there are a lot of people talking about Stanford, you know, the UCLA. What I'm seeing now is more of the other teams mm -hmm. in the Pac-12 are not stepping up to what University of Oregon did last yesterday, and that was exciting to see that the University of Oregon is now making a statement that they are the top team in the Pac-12. A 46-27 to 27 win over Michigan State. Damon Griffin, he's our college football game day, college football game night analyst. You can see him along with myself and Jay Shockey every Saturday at 4 p.m. on college football game day, 8.30 on college football game night.